You see the standings. Purdue and Michigan State tied for first. Michigan, two games behind. Minnesota's won this week already, and that's why this game becomes so crucial. The winner ties Minnesota for fourth place and a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. Hello, everybody. John Laskowski. We're going to bring you the action. It's going to be a great game. Ted Kitchell is with me. And Illinois' story is the guards. Kawan Garris and... Keen, Richard Keen from the outside. Indiana's got to figure out how to stop that. Garris is the real key, and that you have to keep him in front. And there you see the standings. Purdue and Michigan State tied for first. Michigan, two games behind. Minnesota's won this week already, and that's why this game becomes so crucial. The winner ties Minnesota for fourth place and a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. Hello, everybody. John Laskowski. We're going to bring you the action. It's going to be a great game. Ted Kitchell is with me. And Illinois' story is the guards. Kawan Garris and Keen, Richard Keen from the outside. Indiana's got to figure out how to stop that. Garris is the real key, and that you have to keep him in front of. He's a guy that likes to go off screens, and then he likes to penetrate to the basket. Get a good look at him right there. He's a guy that can hit the three-point shot, but most importantly, he likes to get to the basket with penetration, either score or throw it back out to Keen or Hester, who like to sit up behind the three-point line. There's Richard Keene, a good threat from the outside, shoots a big rainbow jump shot. He had a big game against Indiana back in January. For Indiana, you can always count on Alan Harrison. He's having a banner senior year. The freshman can come and go, but I think the real key for Indiana is Brian Evans. Yeah, Henderson has had a banner career, but Evans is the guy that needs to be consistent. You can see he played very well at Illinois, but when Brian Evans plays well, Indiana plays well. He had his biggest game against Kansas with 26 points and like 15 rebounds. You need a big game out of Brian Evans tonight. Time now for the Coquilin Fueling Factors. After these messages. Maria see, for Illinois, Hester, Bennett, Clark, Keene, and Garris, pretty much the set starting five for them. For Indiana, Neil Reed going to be in tonight rather than Charlie Miller. Neil Reed will have a big assignment trying to stop the penetration of, of Kiwan Garris. Also, Andre Patterson continuing to get that start after some good play against Penn State. Papa John's has the perfect pizza at the perfect. Boo Henson, 205 Big Ten victories, and Bob Knight, 301. The first time that two Big Ten coaches with over 200 victories have met in a game. We'll be back with the tip-off after these messages. To make the NCAA tournament, here's the series. Indiana's pulled ahead now at 70-62. Even though they lost that game in January, Henderson and Bennett ready to tip. Ed Hightower, Art McDonald, and Tim Higgins of the Big Ten were underway, and Indiana has the first possession. As we mentioned in the outset, look for Indiana to get into their offense quickly and look for shots, as Allen Henderson does right away. Great tip in by Brian Evans. We talked about Evans being a key. He comes to play right away and gives Indiana the lead. Almost lucky with the tip in, but if you're at the or there at the offensive board, you go every time, you'll have opportunities. This is Garris, 22, likes to play outside. That's Shelly Clark, and watch, he won't move with the ball when he gets it. He likes to pass out, he does there. Tipped by Indiana, Illinois retains possession. There's a good look at Garris, Jerry, Jesse. It is Jerry Hester. Jesse Hester is a receiver in the NFL. And here's Garris, the 1 4 offense, tries to take Reed. I think you'll see Indiana switch on Garris Bennett, a guy not more for rebounding more than an offensive guy, but did a nice job getting inside using his great leaping ability to jump up over the defender and score the two points. He takes good shots, 57% from the field. Second leading rebounder, more, no more for rebounding. Here's a trip as Evans tries to drive left. Foul's going to go on Richard Keene. So got it. When you have an offensive player who can really hurt you, you really want to test him on the defensive end. Well, you want to make him work defensively. The one thing in the IU scouting report on Keene was to make him play defense and try to drive him whenever you get the chance. Right now, he's trying to guard Evans. Look for Brian Evans to put it on the floor and try to get to the basket whenever possible. Michael Herman coming off a big game against Penn State. He had 10 points and give him two. They said he was on the line. He was very close, but a two-point basket, Indiana by two. You can see Garris will try to get by Reed. Great job by Reed right there. Michael Herman's got to take this and all the way. He does. He comes on a crossover dribble to the right hand. It's knocked out by Illinois. Reed's shoulder, Ted, 
is the best it's been a long time. And you can see there as he scrambled for that ball to get it to Michael Hurst. Nice job of doing, uh, of doing exactly what the scouting report said and staying in front of Garris. Do not let him get around you because he really creates a lot of problems once he gets around. Here's Herman against the much, much bigger Bennett. He's yeah, going to have to spread things out. There's not a lot of room inside. Great pass turns by right great into pass. the basket. And he'll have a chance for a three-point play. You see, Patterson and Henderson are really starting to read one another a lot, lot better. Great, great pass. You see this play in the NBA where the guy turns and goes. In the NBA, it's for a dunk. But right here, Indiana will be more than happy with the two points with the opportunity to score another one from the free throw line. Great job by the two, two guys reading one another. Henderson caps off the three-point play with a free throw. As I mentioned, Indiana struggled several ball games with the offense. This game, a great start, seven points, and not even two minutes old. See Neil Reed again. The most important thing is trying to stay in front of Garris and not get on a side where he can drive. Hester, you can see, really pushed off right there, got away with it. But a guy who had a big game against Indiana earlier this year with 19 points and has really struggled since that time. And six three-pointers, uncharacteristically for him. Is just over 10 a game. Tough defense. Illinois is always one of the top leaders in point, at least points allowed. There's a turnover by Indiana. Now Henderson a little off balance. Nobody back. And Bennett shows his athletic ability once again. Great lead pass by Richard King. And easy, too. It looked easy. It's not easy to coordinate that. Bennett steps in front of Henderson, but stepped on the line. Indiana has possession. Ryan Evans, two very poor passers, one of the better passers on Indiana, and really not doing a very good job of reading the defense early. Evans trying to avoid the five-second call. Good cut by Reed for the layup. Andre Patterson with two outstanding passes here early in the game. First out on Henderson and then to a, a cutting Neil Reed. Both end up in layups for Indiana. I can really set up his offense later on as they feel he'll only be a passer. It's time for him to shoot or drive. Here's Keene on a drive. Good block by Herman. It's two on one. Spread the floor. And Reed takes it all the way in. Uh, offensive foul. They're going to call on Reed as Kiwan Garris had position. Bad decision by Neil Reed. He's got to stop and either, either take the 10 foot jump shot or pull it back out and get into an offense or a late break right there. Instead, he, he makes a decision to go inside. He just doesn't have the mobility with that shoulder, and because of it, he ran right over the defender. As Garris goes around Reed, but Neil able to recover. The problem is, when Garris does get around, Indiana can stop him, but it opens up so many other avenues for Illinois. So when you have to help off, as Indiana did right there, Illinois gets easy opportunities. And Bennett missed a short jumper there. Henderson boards. Henderson working inside. That shot blocked by Hester. And a scramble for it. Illinois kicked it out of bounds. But Illinois really the advantage there going after the ball. Brian Evans is going to have to do a better job of reading the defense. He gets bumped pretty good right here. Surprising he didn't get that call. But Brian Evans right now not reading the defender coming across from the other side. And so far they've been able to knock the ball away, making it very difficult for Allen Henderson to get a hand on it. Patterson again, now back to Evans. Indiana continues to work in the corner. Richard Keene going to get number two right there as Indiana continues to try to drive Richard Keene and make him play defense. All the points about Illinois, they don't like to go to their bench a lot. They like to use the five guys who are on the floor, so this can create some matchup problems for Lou Henson. They're going to bring Bryant Notre in. Notre has been injured for much of the year. He's only practiced about three and a half weeks now. Nobody guards Evans. Illinois is asleep, and Evans makes a pay with the three-point. Keene was on Evans, and as he left, Nortry didn't get the matchup and left Evans open for three. Now, there was a change in. I think Hester should have picked up Brian Evans. Nortry picked up Michael Herman, but nobody picked up Brian Evans. Good help by Indiana. Good job by Andre Patterson doing a lot of things tonight. Now, Clark went in that time because he knew that Brian Evans, the shorter Brian Evans, was on him. And goaltending call. We've got timeout. 15:48 left. Indiana leads it 12 to 6. We'll be back after these messages. If you're going to be there, well, the Big Ten Conference is prohibited. 
take a look at that last play. The goaltending makes the score 12 to 8. Very questionable call. I doubt, uh, you know, the, the ball is getting right to the top. But I don't know whether the ball was coming down. It's goaltending when the ball starts coming down. Eddie Hightower felt like it was, and he called the goaltender. Good pass inside by Evans. Indiana doing a nice job offensively of moving the ball around. I'll tell you, it's Henderson moving inside. He's the guy who's getting open. And the big reason is because nobody else is in there posting on top of him. Indiana very poor right there, changing up. Shelly Clark, good hands, makes some pay inside. Indiana has a lot of room, and, and Henderson himself has a lot of room to move around inside because of it. He's getting some easy baskets. See, Illinois will set that high pick and then just slip Shelly Clark, the fellow who sets the pick down there for the easy layup. 14-10 now, Indiana by four. Michael Herman passes up on that shot. There's one by Patterson, and that's what I mean. He passed on a few times and surprised him with a quick jump. Against Penn State, he started taking that shot, and even against Michigan, and he, he didn't hit it a, sh a lot, but I'm glad to see him taking it because it really opened things up for Indiana's offense. Also, he's going to gain confidence, and he's going to start knocking that shot down, as he did right there. Right there. Passes out. That's what he likes to do, as you mentioned, Laz. He's not a guy like a Meche that's going to take it and bang people inside and try to score. He's a guy that's looking to pass, and he did right there, and Nofi knocked it down. Evans tries another three. It's short. And rebounded off Illinois. Shelly Clark can't believe it. He thinks Henderson hit it, but Indiana retains possession. I think the Illinois bench is stunned. I, I think they felt like it was going their way, too. Patterson tried another shot. It was nearly blocked. It forced to travel, and he had to move that shot to get it avoided. Three turnovers. Bob Knight questioning the call. They caught everybody off balance right there. I don't know that uh, Andre Patterson didn't get rid of that ball before he came down. Officials made the call, called traveling. Indiana turns the ball over. Here's the high pick by Bennett. Henderson has to switch. That leaves Bennett open going to the hoop, but Indiana able to make the turnover. Good play right there. Way. Michael Herman, Michael Herman doing a great job using his quickness. He needs to get on balance. Once he gets around that defender, get on two feet and go up strong rather than shooting that, that kind of that wave at the basket as he goes by. Pat Knight checks in for Michael Herman. Two points for Michael Herman as he leaves. Bob Knight with some words of coaching to him. So Indiana goes with Patterson. Henderson and Evans inside. Neil Reed and Pat Knight at the guard. Some out of bounds play. They go quickly back to Evans, but this time Clark picks him up. Indiana doing a better job of screening tonight because of it. They're getting more open shots. Patterson a shot fake. Well, Illinois is sticky on the defense. They don't let that ball in the inside very often. They did that time, and Henderson answered. Good job by Pat Knight. Very tough passing angle, able to get it in there. Alan Henderson doing an outstanding job of holding the defender off, getting the ball, and then taking it to the hole, as we've seen him do for the last four years. Seven first-half points for Henderson. Jerry Hester on the drive, and he gets hacked. Andre Patterson is going to get called on that every time. There's no way you can lean in and slap down at the basketball. Once the defender beats you, you're going to have to go up straight. You see here, tough passing angle, tough passing from the top. Nice job by Henderson holding the defender off. It gets easier that way. That foul went against Henderson, both Patterson and Henderson there. You can see, see how Patterson slaps down? If he just goes straight up with that left arm, Henderson is right in good position to help him. He's probably not going to score the basket, but Andre Patterson slaps down with that left hand, and the official's going to call it every time. Jerry G checks in for Bennett. There's Hester. Hits that first free throw. Hester, an outstanding athlete. You can see he has a lot of quickness, likes to go to his right. When he gets the ball out here on the wing, he's a guy that likes to dribble to his right. And usually you'll see him on the left wing, and Richard Keene, the other forward, will be the guy that fills that right wing spot for Illinois. Hester off on that one. Five-point lead for Indiana. Move the zone here by Illinois. And Neil Reed finds himself open baseline. 
Evans follows and hits it on the jump hook. Great job of offensive rebounding by Indiana. Neil Reed with a good open shot right there, one that you would expect him to hit. Evans, a nice job going to the offensive board. Seven points now for Evans, so Evans and Henderson have 14 of Indiana's 20. Foul on Pat Knight. Pat Knight with the mismatch inside. Got caught shoving. The official's standing right there. Nice job by Illinois of screening and getting the mismatch. Michael Herman checks in for Neil Reed. So Indiana rotating three guards right now. Garris picked up by Herman out of bounds. Here's Shelly Clark gets a double team. He's becoming much more offensive minded and he hits that jumper on the baseline. Clark 11 and a half points a game. Really looking for that shot tonight. Even though he hit that shot, I would rather see him take that shot than Richard Keene standing outside with a wide open three pointer. So I'm sure that's one that Indiana is willing to give up to Shelly Clark. And this is a matchup Indiana can win. Shelly Clark on Brian Evans as Evans takes him in but can't hit the shot. It's two on three. Garris pulls right up and hits the jumper. Very unusual with the out the numbers, but Garris confident in shot. Brian Evans takes a bad shot on one end, and Indiana does not give, put any pressure on Illinois. On the other, is Alan Henderson. Catches it as it rolls out of bounds. Once again, at that tough passing angle from the top, Illinois starting to really drop back in. Going to take a look at it. Alan Henderson down on the block. They're feeding him from up top. You can see right here, Illinois is going to start coming back down in on si inside on Alan Henderson. He's going to have to get the ball and either move with it quickly or he's got to give it up. Shelly Clark comes out of the ball game and has been an up-tempo game. That's what Indiana wanted. And Shelly Clark asked to come out of the game to get a break. So that should help Indiana. He's replaced by Bennett. Bob Knight moves the official out of the way so he can get a good look at his team defensively. A steal by Herman. He stepped on the line. And we've got timeout. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. Job of going to the offensive board, getting position. When he gets a chance to look at that basket on that little jump hook, much more effective than when he throws it. And Brian Evans, we felt, was a real key, and he's gotten off to a good start tonight with seven points in the first ten minutes of the game. Todd Linneman in the ball game for the first time. Seven-foot center, junior center, and Illinois has possession. Let's take a look at our shooting. Both teams are hot. Illinois only missed one shot in tonight's game. Still only one shot. Garris hits from the outside. And it's a one-point ball game. Over 90% now, exactly 90 of 9 of 10 on the Alina. Another tough angle, but the pass gets through twice. Pat Knight from the top has made that pass go. Big man doing a good job of holding the defenders off. Pat Knight continues to look inside. Pat Knight, a good passer. You can see Todd Lindemann gets off to a good start. That's something Indiana needs. He could really help this Indiana team if he comes in and gives them some good offensive play. Good drive inside. That's Nortry. And Illinois strength is rebounding. That time it's Jerry G. He gets the easy put back on the rebound. But the reason he got the easy put back is because of the penetration. They penetrate. Indiana has to come over and help. Todd Lindemann frees himself inside. Herman for the three just off and Nortry has the rebound. Herman thought that was going and didn't go in to get the rebound and came right back towards him. If Indiana cannot contain the guards, Illinois will have a lot of offensive rebound opportunities as they did the last time down the floor. Good containment by Herman there. He prevents Garris inside. And even on that pick by Bennett, very good defense. Indiana wants Garris to go left as they made him because he wants to go right. Indiana, no rebound. Hester wide open. Offensive rebound lead to an open three-pointer. And again, Illinois with the board. Jerry G, so the third time, third possession for Illinois. We're at the 10-minute mark of the first half. It's a slow offense run by Illinois, especially when Garris isn't on top to, to become the leader. Yeah, they 
they want the ball in his hands at all times. You can see Garris right there being held down inside by Michael Herman. Michael Herman trying to keep him from getting the ball. Now watch Herman right here. He just grabs a hold of him. Nice job by Garrison showing the officials how he's being held, and Michael Herman gets called for the foul. Neil Reed now picks up Garris on the out-of-bounds play. He switch it right there. Michael Herman takes him. Takes Hester out on the right side. Now looking for him to get the ball back in Garris's hands as they do right here. Indiana wants Garris to go left. Neil Reed, the other guards are going to force him to his left. He likes to penetrate and do things going to his right. Gia misses on that jumper. Evans has the board. Indiana again up tempo, trying to get that good quick shot. And a hold. We're going to get Bennett inside holding Todd Lindemann. Lindemann's going to try to use his height inside. And that's a mismatch as Clark is still out of the ball game with the rest. There's Lou Henson. 20th year for the Illini head coach. 33 years in total. Coaching Allen Henderson off the inbounds play. That's been a big plus. Indiana's been scoring on the out-of-bounds play. Allen Henderson comes across the lane. They find him and really a quick release. He Went up with that ball, released it very, very quick. Next time he can do the same type of thing, shot fake and get to the basket. So it's good to see Allen Henderson shooting the basketball very well. Again, Garris wanting to go right. Where's he end up? He ends up down on the right baseline, creating problems for Indiana. That's good defense. They've got the trap, but you don't need to steal that situation. Just to bottle him up and use that out of bounds line as a, another defenseman is what you try. And Reed let him off the hook with a slapping foul. Indiana by three. Come into Hester. Michael Herman sneaks in for the steal. Hester retains possession. He's on his knees. No travel. Nortry into G in the layup. Indiana's just getting beat on the loose ball and scramble situations. Ted. Well, that's the type of team Illinois is. They create a lot of problems. They've got a lot of good athletes. A lot of guys that can move with the basketball, move without the basketball, creating a lot of problems. He's going to get a shove right there. In the NBA, he'd be going for the three-point play. Nortry got beat that time by Herman. And that's one thing I think Michael Herman over the years can use that quickness under control to really be a threat. Like Garris is for Illinois now. Shelly Clark in the lineup for Illinois. Michael Herman's every bit as quick and probably stronger than Garris. He just hasn't been able to, to use it as Garris does as Henderson gets fouled and gets the play, gets the three-point opportunity. Allen Henderson has really improved this year. Early in the year, I continued to bang on him about not getting that, that shot down. The last, last 10 games of the season, he's done an excellent job of body control. And watch how he, he knows he's going to get hacked right here. Still goes up with both hands on the ball, goes up strong, gets it off the glass. Great opportunity. He missed it. I wish out of bounds as Illinois taps it away. Andre Patterson checks in. I wish our fans could have seen your face. There was a slight smile when Henderson went up strong and got that basket on your face. A slight smile as you saw that improve. And I thank you for that, Ted. Well, I, I'm the one guy I banged on him all year about not going up. And, and now he's just he's doing a lot better job the last 10 games of keeping that other hand on there. A lot of times not trying to dunk the basketball when there's somebody hanging on him because of it. He's got a lot of three-point opportunities. Henderson leaves now with 11 points. And this is when Indiana's offense has got to find some more scores. They go to Lindemann. It's off Patterson, the big board, blocked. Lindemann comes away with it. So Indiana aggressively on the board. Lou Hansen is off the bench, but not going to get the call. You can see Indiana really good shot right here. That's the shot Indiana's looking for. Patterson goes up and snags it right there is when he has to just shot fake. And then Lindemann's got a Lindemann's got to grab a hold of that basketball. The Ludu not very happy about it. As you can see, he felt like they got a clean slap of the ball right there. Lindemann misses on the first free throw. See, he struggled from the line this year. Good on that one. A high archer. Indiana leads by four. 823 left. First half. I think more scoring to this point than Lou Henson would like to see, but I know it makes Bob Knight happy. He needs that game in the 70 or 80 point range for Indiana to win. There's Garris outside. Reed's done a nice job. Double teamed by Herman. Off-balance shot. 
but that offensive rebound, Shelly Clark that time, that's the one point that Indiana's hurt, been hurting on here in the first half. Shelly Clark's a guy you got to get a body on every time down the floor because he's a big guy inside and he's going to continue to go to the board. He's a hard worker. Oh, that's, that's got to be a shove right there. Chester just shoves him out of bounds. Should be a three-point opportunity. It's right in front of the referee who's just totally asleep on that play. An almost identical move we saw a few minutes ago as he drives the right baseline. And a tough shot. He gets it to go as he's losing his angle. He nearly went out of bounds. Indiana by four. Here's Shelly Clark. Good help by Michael Herman getting over. Triple team and Esther. Triple drive fakes there. Nortree open. He's got a good looking shot. Bryant Nortree, 6'4 freshman from Chicago Simeon. It's from the outside. Michael Herman comes back. Air ball. Tipped out of bounds, but Illinois hit it. And we've got timeout. 7.05 left. Indiana leads it 29-27. We'll be back after these messages. Penetration by Garris, which usually creates problems. And Lindemann doesn't have to come off and help this time. No reason that he shouldn't get a body on Shelly Clark and get him off the board. Doesn't need to worry about getting the rebound himself. Just make sure that your guy doesn't get the rebound and somebody else will probably come up with it from, from Indiana. And instead, Clark, good hands inside. You can see, doing a nice job on the board so far. There's our shooting. At least Illinois is down to 63%. Indiana's burning them up as well. Evans on the drive, reverse layup. Clark to help. Lindemann to follow. Todd Lindemann doing a nice job of going to the boards tonight. That's three balls he's got his hands on so far on the offensive glass. Two of them he's got back in for buckets. Richard Keene back in the lineup for Illinois. Clark on the jumpers off. Patterson boards. We mentioned earlier that's the shot Indiana would rather see Illinois take. Shelly Clark with a turnaround shot. Indiana again continues to go inside. Patterson, one dribble, move to the basket. You see that time, Illinois thought he was going to turn around and take that jump shot, which he likes to take instead. He uses his quickness. Little shot fake gets inside. Excellent move by Andre Patterson. Six-point lead for Indiana, and this crowd coming to life as the Hoosiers put on a spurt. Richard Keene drives all the way to the bucket. You've got to do a better job of containing Coach Knight up off the bench, yelling at Brian Evans, he's got to do a better job individually containing Richard Keene. Richard Keene, not that quick off, off the dribble. Indiana by four. Just under six minutes left, first half. Screen by Lindemann. And now the post up by Todd. Evans, a lot of people inside, not much room. He split the gap there. G, uh, the fans thought G had hit him, but Turnover to Illinois. Keen, that's the shot he likes. And that's why he likes it. The three-pointer cuts this lead to one. Likes he's to set, now five points. Likes to set up on the right side. When he comes down in transition, he's a guy that's going to set up on the right side. They penetrate. You know he's going to be there at all times. They throw it out to him. He's standing there ready for the three. Evans matches that three for Indiana. What a way to counter Illinois. Hard to tell last time down whether... The guy had his hand on the ball or Brian's arm, but uh, the officials obviously thought it was on the ball. Here's Nortry. This is Garris. Indiana's kept him under control here, first half. He likes to go right. Whoa, that jumper high over Patterson, and he hits it. Six now for Kiwan Garris. He really shot that one up in the air to get it over Andre Patterson. Good movement here by Indiana. Gets Reed open for a three-pointer. Indiana really doing a good job of moving the basketball on offense. Neil Reed doing a good job of finding the opening. Because of it, got the good look at the three. Able to knock it down. Benjamin can't jump back off of Dorothy. He has not missed that shot. That's three for three for him tonight. You can see why Illinois wants him on the floor. Illinois only a 44% shooting team from the field, way above that today. Indiana's not giving them a lot of easy shots. They're just shooting well from the field. Indiana leads by three. Michael Herman. 
shot fake. Rebound, Patterson on the tip. Andre Patterson, outstanding. Going to the offensive glass. You can see the Indiana coaches trying to get Indiana set up defensively. The last couple times, Illinois come down and attacked them very quickly for easy baskets. Quick shot right there. Good block out by Todd Lindman. Indiana looking to go quickly the other way. And a better job of block out by Indiana. Evans fakes the three and draws the foul as both players hit the deck. That one will be on Nortree. Nine team fouls now for Illinois. Illinois. One thing the, uh, the Doug Altenberger, who does the TV for Illinois, said on the road, Illinois not quite as patient as they are at home. And they, just like the last time down, Richard Keene takes a very quick shot, one that Lou Henson not very happy with, gives Indiana a quick look at the other end because of it, Brian Evans going to have an opportunity for two free throws. Kevin Turner in the game, 33 for Illinois, 6'2 freshman from Simeon. Good look there at Brian Evans, 10 points already, first half. Long on that free throw as Indiana struggles from the line here, first half. And Turner becomes the point guard as Garris now out of the lineup for Illinois. Good job from Michael Herman as he's guarding Keene, the outside shooter. Pretty good defense there. Illinois a little out of sync here. You can see how important Garris is to him. Yeah, they definitely look to have the ball in Garris's hands about 95% of the time. Oh, uh, hooked that time. The crowd behind us noticed it. No call by on Shelly Clark. Steal by Herman. Layup. He got it as he stretched out there to avoid the block shot. But defensively is where he made the play. His good quickness. He tipped the ball away, knocked it into the Illinois defender, able to pick it up. Had an easy layup going the other way. Indiana doing very good. Defensively, making Illinois take some tough shots as Hester able to hit one right there. And that was a tough shot. Well guarded off the run, and Hester hits it. Lead is five. Here's Evans. Gets it tapped away by Hester from the back. And timeout as Henderson comes into the game after this break. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. court of Illinois is also called the Assembly Hall in Champaign. Look at Bob Knight and Norm Ellenberger. We'll hear from Norm after the game with his coach's comments. So far, he's got to be pleased with what Indiana's done. Indiana doing a nice job using their up-tempo, trying to create up early, quick opportunities in their offense. As you can see, three-point field goals. Indiana three for five. That's a lot of three-point opportunities for Indiana. A lot of made opportunities as Indiana averaging just under three. They've already reach that Henderson slipped and the ball tipped off his hand six turnovers I don't know if he Indiana. slips I think Shelly Clark comes over here and knocks Ooh. him down pretty good the official not able to see that I think coach Knight expressing his opinion there's turnovers both teams doing a nice job of keeping those down Turner gets the ball picked up right in the lane here's Clark again moves on Lindemann jump hook is off and it really cleared out there. Bennett and Patterson both went down. Hester grabbed the rebound. Got to get a body on him every time. Hester is an outstanding athlete. Clark saves it, and this time Turner has. So Illinois making a run. They're only three down, 120 left, first half. Hester likes that three. He shot it quickly. It tips off of Illinois, and Neil Reed keeps that possession. Got to like the way Shelly Clark plays for Illinois. He's a guy that's going after balls. He's helping inside. He's very enthusiastic. Just does a lot of things for Illinois. And just a, a, been an outstanding player for them this year. Patterson way outside. And Henderson had an arm up. Hester's going to be called for a hold to prevent Henderson from going after that ball. It seems the last three times down, Indiana has tried to get the ball inside to Allen Henderson. Each time, Illinois continues to do a very, very good job making it difficult for Indiana to get the ball in there. That night comes out, Michael Herman in for him. Neil Reed is out. Steve Hart in for the first time. Reed's still working at bandage, but that shoulder is strong as it's been for a long time. As evidenced by that three-pointer he hit. Allen Henderson now at the line. 
There's another $25 to Gleaners from Noble Roman's Pizza. And don't forget, the better pizza people deliver both lunch and dinner. Give them a call today. Anderson good on both. And Indiana's built that lead to five. One minute left, first half. And a well-played first half by Indiana, 45 points. Illinois shooting well is the reason they're up to 40 themselves. Steal by Hart. Henderson picks it up. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Goes to the hoop and down. A block. Turner gets the foul. Henderson off on the shot. Illinois one of the charge. Let's look. Let's see, we'll take a look at it. Good job by Hart coming over to help out. Look at Allen Henderson just kind of takes it away from Hart right here. I think it's a good call right here. Nobody's got position right there. Allen Henderson going to the basket, not able to get that ball in, but it's tough when somebody's underneath you. There's another $25 to Gleaners from Noble Romans Pizza. Within 25 minutes after placing your delivery order, Noble Romans will be will call to let you know your pizza is on its way or it's free. That free throw off as Henderson misses. Six-point lead, 43 seconds left. Illinois will have to take a shot, about a nine-second different on the shot clock. This is where they like to get the ball in Garris's hands. He'll penetrate, he'll either get to the basket. The ball knocked off the official. He's in the field of play as he ran into the scorer's table. He's going to give it back to Illinois. Garris and Turner both in the game, so Illinois with two point guards at the same time. Hart's done a nice job defensively here to knock some balls away. You see pressures Garris back into the backcourt. There's your shot clock on the left, game clock on the right. About a 10 se second difference. You can see down to five, and they haven't even started moving with it. I think he wasn't aware. Has to take a wild one, and he got it. Garris with one second hits it. Now Indiana with six. Got to look for the shot. Herman does. Three-pointer off the rim. And that's the end of the first half. Indiana with a good scoring first half. Still in lead by four. Let's watch Garris as the shot clock winds down. Garris was not aware of the shot clock. He was looking at the game clock. You can see one shot left when he takes it. Great shot. Cuts it to four as they go to halftime. Big play for Illinois by Garris. 46-42 at the half. We'll be back after these messages. Are they're shooting better than 50%. They're committing less turnovers than their opponent, and they have well on their way to 80 points. So things are looking toward an Indiana victory. They still need a good second half. And this Illinois team has come to play tonight. They have possession of the ball. Second half, and Keen gets around Herman. Off on the jumper. There's Shelly Clark having a great game. And Clark draws the foul. Exactly what we talked about at halftime. Indiana gives up gives up an easy shot to Keen. Fortunately, he misses the shot, but nobody gets a body on Shelly Clark. Shelly Clark's a guy, again, that I'm going to point out, you don't need to worry about rebounding the basketball if you're guarding him. All you need to do is make sure that he doesn't get the basketball. If he doesn't get it, somebody on Indiana probably will get the basketball. So far, Shelly Clark's done an excellent job of going to the boards. He scored eight with a chance for two more right here. That's an ugly free throw, too. <laughs> I was going to say strange. Uh, you Ugly is it good. Words. I mean, what, watch how he was. spins it. He spins it up in the air. It's a high arch. And he missed both of them. It's a yeah. good-looking free throw if you're an Indiana fan. Yeah. Down at the other end. Henderson goes down. Bennett as well. But a foul. No. They're going to call a charge on Allen Henderson. A foul is called, but it goes on Henderson. Let's watch. Let's take a look. Good job by Bennett getting inside. Good position by Bennett. Takes the charge on Allen Henderson. That's one that he has, after he gets around the defender, he has to make a decision of whether to pull up. That time he didn't. He got called for the charge. Inside to Clark Boy. Illinois going to him twice now. Shelly Clark on the turnaround jumper. Two-point lead by Indiana. Here steal by Hester, leaves Evans open, just inside the line, two-pointer. So Evans again matches a quick basket by Illinois. 
Indiana not really getting, getting into a good offensive movement right now. Very lucky right there. The defender gave Evans an easy shot. First five minutes of each half, so important. Indiana won the battle first half. Oh. Blocked by Henderson on Garris. Garris hadn't seen many guys. Henderson's side trying to guard him outside. Patterson moves right into Clark in a foul. Play Indiana strategy, Ted, might be to keep moving that ball inside, oh, draw oh, some more oh, fouls oh, on oh, Illinois, get them in foul trouble, knowing their bench isn't strong, and get to the line. You can see great defense by Allen Henderson. He just stayed close enough to Garris where he couldn't get around him, yet he couldn't get the shot up over the top of him. Outstanding play by Allen Henderson. The out of bounds play again as Patterson picks on Evans, but the shot wasn't there. There's nothing there. They need to get the ball out of the corner. There's just not going to be anything there. And that's going to go on Henderson again. Two quick fouls, pushing off to get possession. Three fouls on Allen Henderson. Bob Knight can only scratch his head. As you go into the halftime, Henderson with one foul, you're thinking you're pretty good. Less than a minute and a half in the second half. And Allen picks up his third. Indiana continues to, to play with the ball down in the corner. If nothing's there, if you can't drive the baseline, I think it's best to throw the ball back out on top and get into an offense. Esther throws it. It's out of bounds before Bennett can track it down. Silly turnover by Illinois. As good as both teams looked in the first half, they come out in the second half and both look about as bad. Neither team getting into any type of offense. There's no movement. A lot of standing around right now. Anderson posts up on Clark. Now he's stuck, turning jump shot is up. Patterson trying to slam it. A good block that time by Bennett. And now Herman draws the foul. This time that goes on Bennett. At this rate, we're going to see a lot of free throws shot at the end of the game. Both teams fouling one another. They're reaching, grabbing. Nobody's moving their feet. Both teams committing a lot of fouls early here in the second half. Nobody guards Henderson. Brian Evans makes that play right there. Allen Henderson's the recipient. But Brian Evans read the defense. Nobody was paying attention. He got Allen Henderson an easy two points. That's eight points now. Indiana's made off the out-of-bounds pass. Nothing special about those plays. They've caught Illinois sleeping. The lead now six. Neil Reed doing a nice job of just containing Garris. That's all Indiana's interested in is containing him and not letting him get to the basket. Hester on the drive. Patterson with good defense. Another offensive rebound. 11 offensive rebounds. Illinois first half five offensive shot clock is down to four again Garris same shot he made the half that running shot from the right free throw line he gets that one to fall Indiana by four Herman cuts inside somehow gets that shot up and again all five Illini around that board to come up with a rebound Michael Herman, good cut inside, got the basketball, jumped right up, missed the easy layup. Oh, good cut that time. Garris on the back door, and Hester caught him from the outside. 12 now for Garris. Illinois trails by two. And again, Brian Evans responds with a quick jumper to push the lead to four. Indiana comes down to four. Illinois can set up defensively. Does a nice job of attacking. You get a lot of open shots that way. Good job by Garris last time for Illinois on this end of the floor, knowing when he doesn't have the ball, Indiana wanting to keep it away from him. Back cut. Garris has really taken over this game on the offensive end. Nobody for Indiana able to stop him right now. Spin dribble as he got to the baseline. Michael Herman looked like a double dribble there. He got away with it. Patterson hits the jumper. There you see Herman motioning to Patterson. You got to watch when I bring the ball up. You're open. And I wanted to get it to you sooner. Somebody has got to stop Garris right now. You can see he just kind of keeps working his way inside. Almost like he wears you down and then Hester on a back cut. So it's not a very sophisticated offense. It's just looking for the opening and Garris sure can't find guys. Michael Herman has fallen asleep twice defensively. That's twice he's gotten back cut for easy baskets. Michael Herman watching the ball rather than watching his defender and the ball. Herman jump shot is off. so. Illinois with a big rebound, four on two, and a foul from behind on Patterson. So Illinois really getting the edge as their bench is up and cheering 
for the Illini. 15-23 left. Indiana leads it 54-52. We'll be back after these messages. Gets caught watching his man rather than the basketball. He has no idea where the basketball is. He cannot play defense. You gotta know where both are. Once again, gets caught not knowing where the basketball is. He cannot open up. Twice Michael Herman got, got beat. And it also got him a seat on the bench. There you see Hester made that last move. Charlie Miller in the lineup for the first time for Indiana as Herman sits. And Illinois has a chance to tie this game. Illinois takes Garris out as you take a look at the field goals. Illinois 5 of 8, Indiana 4 of 7. Both teams getting a lot of easy shots inside. Good knock away by Henderson. And Hester was open right in front of the basket. Drive by Turner. Dish then to Jerry G. And we've got a tie ball game at 54. Five minutes gone for in the second half. Well, the one thing Coach Knight has stressed defensively is containment, and I've mentioned it a number of times tonight, but if Indiana cannot contain these people on the dribble, you're going to create a lot of easy opportunities for Illinois. Drive by Reed and Dish to Patterson. Henderson on the board. G tries for the block, and Henderson draws the foul. Good job by Allen Henderson positioning himself on the other side of the basket. We mentioned in other telecast about 90% of the time you shoot from the other side. It's going to rebound off the other side as Allen positioned himself right there, able to pick up the rebound and have a chance at two free throws. Indiana not sharp early here in the second half. But that foul shot, here's good news for pepperoni lovers. Noble Romans in introduces the new 101 pepperoni pizza. Count your pepperoni today at Noveroni. Anderson hits both, and Indiana's up by two. And it's a close game as we expected. Now it's high scoring, or more high scoring than we thought, but still close as both teams shooting well from the field. I'm surprised Indiana continues to put so much pressure out on Illinois. They are known as a very good shooting team, although recently they've not shot the basketball very well on the road. As Hester's going to get a chance right here, but Indiana continues to put a lot of pressure on Illinois, and Illinois continues to get a lot of easy baskets inside. Indiana fans wanted to push off that time. They won't get it. This is a vital game for Illinois. They play Purdue at home on Saturday, but then their last two games are Northwestern and Ohio State. Hester hits for three, so you can pretty much count those two victories at the end of the year, Northwest Ohio State. So Illinois is in a position to move up, and that is their first lead of the game on a three-pointer. They lead it by one. Evans for three. Too long. It goes over the top. The first time Evans has not been able to match a three-point shot by the Illini. You can see he's frustrated there as he was open with that shot. Indiana's real letdown has been on the defensive end. Illinois able to score almost at will. Indiana's going to have to do a better job, knock some balls away, get on the board. When Illinois has missed, Illinois has gotten their own rebounds. Turner is well short on that three-pointer. Charlie Miller fights for it. And that foul is going to go on Kevin Turner in the backcourt. Indiana not really going after the basketball. This game is very, very important if they're interested in getting into the NCAA tournament. When you're playing a game like that, for that matter, any game, I mean, when the ball gets on the floor, you've got to get after it. Right now, this, this team kind of waiting for that basketball to come to them, and uh, victories don't come to you in the Big Ten. You've got to go out and get them. Harris is back in with Richard Keene at the guard. Jerry Park is still out for it. Henderson open on the lob. Immediately double team, but he gets it off the backboard. Getting double and triple team, very, very difficult to get the ball inside. Indiana needs to spread out on the other side of it. Needs to spread out on the other side of the floor and give Allen an opportunity, if double team, to throw the ball across court for a three point try. Shelly Clark back in the game for Illinois. Created a lot of problems for Indiana here tonight. Lou Henson wants to keep him in there. Shelly's been asking to come out. There's Bennett on the bench. Get Charlie Miller in there, see if he can 
put some pressure on Garris. Charlie, a good athlete, a lot of quickness. Here's Clark, double team blocked by Patterson. But Indiana not able to come up with the loose ball. Once again, they knock it away, but you, they can't come up with it. Illinois lead taken away as Henderson hits for two. It's Indiana by one. Boy, look at Garris. Oh, he put his head down. Wanted to go all the way, and Charlie Miller stayed with him. 21 now for Henderson. Shelly Clark, confident offensively, misses. And Miller has it. This is up-tempo basketball. Evans, baseline is off. And again, Illinois comes away with it. Goes right back to Henderson. Off of Shelly Clark. First and 15 on the 10. Right? It counts as two, not six. First and 20. First and 10. And the crowd likes what they say. It's Indiana by three. 12, 14 left in the game. G open misses. Rebounds misses. Clark with the tip. Two the rebound is rebounds is right there. Indiana. Indiana continues to stand and watch when they shoot the basketball. You've got to go after that basketball. I'm sure that's one thing Coach Knight is going to tell his big people. You've got to go after that basketball inside. Lindemann's going to come in for rebounding. Henderson. Move on the baseline, draws the foul. And G, number 32, going to get the call. He was pushing Allen Henderson as Allen made the quick move along the baseline. Lindemann checks in for Patterson. Oh, Bennett's Patterson. back in for Illinois. We've got timeout. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. scoring game the Illinois team just not giving it up and again both teams really shooting well in this game Illinois shot 66 percent in the first half to Indiana 63 you can see they really haven't let up much in the second half I don't I think if uh, I was in charge of something tonight, I'd want to be in charge of the offense not the defense Illinois 63 percent now on the game and Indiana is known as about a 40 percent team Letting the opponent shoot about 40%, so the line eye way up tonight. Let's see what Indiana can do. Look for Indiana to maybe have a set play off the timeout. You can see they're going to get Shelly Clark for pushing right there. They're trying to drive him and Richard Keene whenever they get the opportunity when they come out on the floor. See Indiana moved it around. They get the switch. Brian Evans with it right away. He tries to move Shelly Clark, and they're going to call him for the push. He didn't push him very much. He didn't get it. Bennett probably would have gotten it. Third foul on Clark. So Illinois starting to creep up into that foul trouble area. Still 11:30 left in the game, so Clark going to have to watch it with having three fouls. He's been very, very important. Illinois. Oh, well, shot fake by Charlie Miller. Shades of Calvertini right there. Really quick off his feet. You can see a good shot fake. Gave, you know, enough time to give the defender a chance to get up in the air and then get right around him and get to the basket. Great move by Charlie Miller to give him some confidence. Indiana by three. Reed getting bumped around a lot down on the baseline. The big guys need to step out and bump Garris off, off his clutch. When he starts running around you, you need to bump him. He took the three-pointer. Smart play as Illinois tipped it away, knowing Garris would be there for another possession. You watch Garris go down along the baseline. It's up to Evans, Lindemann, and people like that to get a body on him and not let him cut around their people so easily. Now switch as Miller picks him up. New shot clock on that missed shot. So Illinois has plenty of time, although it's now down to 10. Clark takes it up, and he hits the soft jumper. One-point lead for Indiana. Lob pass, Henderson just off, gets his own rebound, lays it back in. Evans with a good pass. Allen got caught just a little bit under the basket, or he would have slammed that one in. Good recognition to come back, get a hold of it, and put it back in the basket. Good, good play by Brian Evans to get the basketball to him. Right, every time Illinois gets it close, Indiana responds. This time it's Garris, and Reed is going to draw that foul. Boy, Garris is quick and handles that ball well. 
and very, very smart. You can see that time he drives into the lane and then almost jumps back into Neil Reed. Neil Reed a little bit out of position, gets called for the foul. Neil Reed having a very difficult time trying to handle Garris, who's very, very quick off the dribble. Michael Herman is in for Reed. Coach Duck is an Ellenberger with some instruction. Keen back in for Illinois. Garris at the line. Just under 10 minutes to go in the half. Or in the game, excuse me. Both both teams already shooting the one and one. Bennett tried to tip that one in. It's two free throws. Garris on quite a streak. He's made 47 of his last 50 free throws. That's 94 percent. And he missed that first one. He's good there. Two point lead by Indiana. And this one looks like it's going down to the wire. Just under 10 minutes left in the game. Got to get it in. Lindemann, he's got the mismatch. He does. He takes Keen right in there. Todd Lindemann, a no dribble move. Good recognition by the guards right there to get the ball to Lindemann. There was a switch. Keen got switched off on Lindemann, who's about six inches taller. Lindemann did a good job positioning himself and taking advantage. Nortry shot fake blocked by Lindemann. Evans picked it up, but it kicked it off his foot. And Illinois is going to get it. Coach Knight up with some encouragement off the bench. I'm sure he would like Brian Evans to have grabbed a hold of that basketball rather than try to dribble it right there. Brian Evans trying to get the ball down the court as quickly as possible as they'll, they'll redo the shot clock after a kick basketball. And a good block that time by Lindemann on the Illinois shot. Lou Henson, lower left, calls the signal. Play number three, Garris. Here's it right in front of him. Big play number three is everybody standing around and let Garris create. Well, they really spread the offense, and it's high. And Garris inside looks for a pick. They go to Clark. He moves on Lindemann, and Indiana rebounds. Clark goes down. Henderson drives in, and the shot is good off the backboard. Good job by Brian Evans of setting up the play, stopping at the free throw line, dishing it off Allen Henderson. Out. Great hands to come up with that basketball and get it up in traffic. 27 points for Henderson. The Indiana hustle picked up here in the last few minutes. Nortry off balance. Doesn't get it. Foul on Bennett on the push for rebounding. A good job by Allen Henderson right there. Blocking out, getting the call. Bennett tried to go up through Allen Henderson. The official's right there, and Allen Henderson will get a chance to shoot a one and one at the other end. That's three on Bennett. Henderson with the one and one. 17 fouls now on Illinois. Illinois wants a substitute for Bennett. They'll bring Hester in. So both uh, Clark has three. Hester comes in from Nortry. So they leave Ben in the game with three and Clark in the game with three. He's matched him. He misses on that free throw. They will be crucial here as the game draws to a close. 8-16 left. Indiana now by six. Richard Keene, three-pointer is off. Again, the battle for the rebound. And the foul goes on Hester. He doesn't believe it. And from Charlie. From Charlie Miller, number Charlie. three. And Lou Henson thought the same, that the foul was called on Hester. He was pointing out Hester as the free throw shooter. And that brought Henson off the bench. Well, you'd hate to get a technical in that situation when you're, you're really on the ref when he's making sure that your man's getting to the line. The one and one for Hester. Gets the roll there. Come up with a couple big games against them. Yeah, an outstanding game in Champaign. Jerry G checks in for Clark. Save him, uh, give him a little rest and save his foul situation with three. Hester, same shot again off the front of the rim and the backboard through. The lead is four. Eight minutes left, second half. Andre Patterson checks in at the next dead ball. Indiana trying to do a lot of screening inside, trying to use their height advantage as Todd Lindemann does a nice job of catching and turning, not trying to do too much. That's all he needs to do is catch, turn, 
smaller defenders on him gets the easy basket. Hester, six foot six, couldn't block that shot. 7.33 left, Indiana leads it 72-66. We'll be back after these messages. Todd Lindemann inside, this is all he needs to do. Catch, turn, and shoot that nice little soft jump shot. People in the NBA pay people a lot of money that can just catch, turn, and shoot. Story in the middle. Take a look at him, Lindemann and Patterson. You add those up, those are pretty good numbers. That was in the previous ball game. And there you see Andre by himself now, eight points, four rebounds. Illinois ball, Indiana by six. Keen on the drive, boy, quick move that time. And he gets it with the left hand. Now he's got to do a better job of getting over, cutting Richard Keen off, not letting him get to the basket. Seven minutes left, Indiana by four. Indiana using the back screen and then the post. Trying to use the back screen as a fall away. Tough shot for Indiana, good hands by Evans to come up with it. Into Patterson. Nice job by Andre Patterson. Recognizing there's nothing there. If you want Garris going to get the foul. Coming around Allen Henderson inside. It's a real mismatch that time as Garris picked up Henderson. Second on Garris. One and one for Henderson. Shelly Clark will check in at the next horn and there it is he comes Stop in for Bennett the Lou Henson's gonna have to work that to avoid the fouls give his big guys some rest likes to move six guys G's been in the lineup quite a bit for the Illini Richard Keene grabs that free throws have hurt Indiana especially the front end of one and one Alan Anderson has missed his last two one and one tries free throws become very important the open. Game. Way outside, now he drives it. Shelly Clark really working on Patterson inside. Garris on Evans. Oh, good pass inside. G goes in for the slam and draws the foul. Great ball move by Illinois. You can see Garris penetrates, passes out to Keene. Good, good shot fake. Look at Garris, good penetration inside. Indiana comes over to help. Good help back by Michael Herman, but just one more pass. That's Indiana not able to recover that quickly. G, Indiana, very fortunate G not able to get that, that ball in the basket. That one is in by G. Got the roll and an ooh from the crowd. Indiana by three, that's second foul on Patterson. Better for him that time. It's a two-point ball game, 6.14 left. And you can see, feel the anxiety this crowd has. They know how important this game is to Indiana. And their team has played well, but only up by two. See, Illinois has really backed off the defensive pressure. They're not putting near as much pressure on the basketball right now, kind of backing off inside. They know Indiana points are coming from the inside, and that's where Indiana wants to get the basketball. Charlie Miller, Herjay fired up a three. That keeps the defense honest. Big basket there for Miller. Good recognition by Charlie Miller to see that Illinois is backing off and that the, somebody's going to have to step up and hit the jump shot. It might as well be me. Good recognition by the freshman. That is a big play for a freshman to be able to take that shot with confidence. And Miller did. Patterson really earning his stripes as Shelly Clark is trying to muscle him. That's quite a battle. Garris inside. And a foul. Michael Herman. Okay, Garris is the kind of kid you can build a team around with what he can do to him. He's just so quick and he's so hard to handle and he's so quick off the dribble. It's very, very difficult to ever get him to pick up his dribble. The one thing that does make him so effective is that he doesn't pick up his dribble. You can't trap him, you can't do anything with him. He calls up and he keeps his dribble alive and uh, he just creates a lot of problems. At least he does for this Indiana team. He leads the team in points, assists, steals, and minutes played. 
Well, he does it all. He holds the Illinois record with 39 consecutive made free throws. And getting late in a game, he's so very, very important because he can handle the basketball. You can't take it away from him. And if you do foul him, he's a guy that can knock the free throws down. He's missed two tonight. Out of bounds off Brian Evans. Illinois retains possession. Indiana has to assume that each free throw that is shot is going to be missed. I think they felt like he was probably a good free throw shooter. He's going to make it. They don't pay much attention. He misses, and Illinois is going after the rebound. Gets another opportunity to score two points. Clark, what a block by Patterson. Good Charlie defense. Miller comes away with it. I think Shelly Clark was going to pass that basketball. He wasn't shooting it. Charlie Miller just off. It's a good shot, about 15 feet, although it was taken quickly. Miller felt confident. Four-point lead by Indiana, just under five minutes remain. Could have been steps there the crowd wanted. Clark rebounds. Clark, going to get one on Clark right there. He continues to shove. G was on the floor, and that's the call. Shelly Clark picks up his fourth. Bennett comes in for G. I like the way Shelly Clark plays, though. He plays hard, plays with a lot of intensity. He's going after that basketball at all times. Lou Hansen pondering what to do. He'd like to have Clark in there late in the game, but how long do you keep him in with four fouls? Henderson again off. Bennett rebounds, foul on Patterson on the rebound. Illinois goes to the line. Allen Henderson has got to make those free throws. But that's something that you practice every day in practice. You've got to step up. I know that he's trying as hard as he can, but at, you know, at this point in time, if you expect to win close games in the Big Ten, you've got to step up there and make those free throws. That puts Bennett at the other end on the line. Patterson's third foul. Indiana over the 10 foul limit, so it's two shots now for Bennett and Illinois the rest of the way. One thing this Indiana team doesn't do a lot of times is uh, on the free throw, it's so important for where Miller and Evans are right now to step down on the other player so he can't get inside. You step down, that way that other player, you almost trip him and he can't get inside his lane. Now, in each case, they will not do it. It makes it much more difficult to block that guy out. Two free throws are good, and a two-point lead now for Indiana. Four minutes, 30 seconds left. Indiana's offense. Evans on a drive. Good That's pass to Henderson. He's fouled. Oh, he went, uh, Rucker went right into, or Ed Hightower, to Shelley Clark, but then went around him. Well, that would have been Clark's. Brian Evans, foul. Brian Evans really creates right here. You can see doesn't have a lot to do with it right there because he's got a hold of his arm. That's one that Allen's going to make about nine out of ten times, and he misses it, and he misses his fourth free throw in a row. You can see him step off that line. He's trying to regain some composure, and there's Herman and Patterson. It's all mental at this point. I mean, he's a guy that's made a lot of free throws over his career. Matter of fact, I think he's taken... Probably second on the all-time list as far as free throws attempted. So it's just mental. You see, he got up there, got, got prepared. And with that 76 point, we remind you to stop after the game by your local 76 station for quality 76 gasoline and convenience items. 76, 73, Indiana leads it. Bennett outside is off. Charlie Miller rebounding. Herman pushing it up, but Indiana does need quick baskets right now. And Herman slows it down. Michael Herman's got to be very careful with that basketball out front. Garris very quick with the hands, and he'll pick it away from you if you give him the opportunity. Pat, that's Henderson. He gets the shot inside as he leaned away from the basket to get that jumper. Allen Henderson, he's also aware that Shelly Clark has four fouls. Shelly Clark not wanting to foul out, not putting a lot of pressure on Allen. 30 points now for Henderson in a great game offensively. Michael Herman has to really stay awake right there when he's guarding Garris because you fall asleep for just a second, he's going to get inside and create problems. Good help by Miller. That left Keene open. 
and he nails the three right in front of the Illinois bench. Two-point game, three minutes, ten seconds left. Once again, Garris is the one who creates the problems by penetrating. Indiana not able to stop his penetration. Benico Good pass inside. Evan is open and gets the hoop. Andre Patterson really has come into his own tonight. He, he's not only scoring and rebounding, but he's passing the basketball. Really an all-around performance by Andre Patterson tonight. 16 for Evans. 2.43 left. Indiana by four. Hester likes to dribble and create things off of the dribble. Bennett is double teamed by Herman. And Michael wanted that out of bounds, and Illinois keeps it. Time out. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. The cheerleaders are doing their job as they've got this crowd fired up. It's the final stretch run in a wonderful ball game, and we'll look here at the final stretch for Indiana. Michigan State, the league leader on Saturday. Wisconsin and Iowa, three tough games for the Hoosiers to finish out Big Ten play. With their NCAA tourney bid on the line. 2.34 left. Illinois ball. And for Illinois to have set something up in the, in the timeout. Tried to use Shelly Clark to get him open inside for an easy layup. I'm sure that uh, Coach Henson has drawn up a play. Look for a, maybe a back screen, something, somebody going to the basket. Michael Herman tries to prevent Garris from getting the ball. Shot clock is down. Hester fires one on the line. Nearly a three-pointer. Illinois wants it. Let's see. Oh, and they let's see. Ed Hightower is only two. So one official saw it as a three, and the other two both saw it as a two-pointer. And Hightower gets the call. Lou Henson wants the three. Ball in play, 18 now for Hester. And it's a two-point game. Big call there. And it's two points for the Illini. Henderson takes it in strong. Great pass by Brian Evans. Good job by the Indiana offense moving the ball around and creating the opening for Henderson inside. Two minutes left. Indiana by four. Clear it out for Garris. You want to win the game. You've got to, to stop Garris. You cannot let him continue to penetrate inside. Hester, a wild shot. Bennett there to board for the offensive rebounding. Potent weapon for Illinois. Shot by Clark. Foul on Henderson. It's four on Henderson. Let's watch, see if we can pick up Hester's feet on that three-point shot. We have a great look, but Eddie Hightower does have a good look on the other side. And Eddie Hightower's just out of your screen to the left. He was right on it, and he's the one that came over and said definitely that he had a foot on the line. That was the best angle. There's Hightower. But you can see the official who had our angle lifted up the, the hand with three points on it. But you couldn't really see it from that angle. Shelly Clark on the line. And again, that it's not very pretty, but he's made two out of three tonight, so uh, you got to give him credit. 64% from the foul line. And stepping up there at an important time, and he's hitting free throws that Illinois definitely needs. Front rim there, rebound off of Henderson. Illinois retains possession. Indiana has not been able to come up with a number of rebounds this year off of missed free throws. It's, it's just like another turnover in the books when you give that one away. 136 left. Indiana leads at 82-79. We'll be back after these messages. Good season. This will be our last broadcast this year on TTV4. And thanks to our special crew who does such a great job. Our cameraman, Rex, our assistant here, and uh, of course, Jerry and Peter in the truck, Julie Warwick, and our stat man, Terry Moore. And Ted, I didn't want to tell you this before, but Channel 4 put a special kill switch in the truck.
for you this year. Peter O'Brien's had his hand on it all year, and he has not had to use it once. Congratulations, Ted Kitchell. That's Peter, enough. he did it for you this year. I've been a, I've been a good boy all year. <laughs> Let's see if Indiana can pull this one out. 124 left. Illinois ball. Illinois going to want to have the ball in Garris's hands right where they've got it. You can see he pops up for the jumper. Ooh, and a tough one over Henderson. Garris hits a full court press, and Herman brings it up. One point ball game, one minute left. Charlie Miller pass to Henderson, and Hester grabbed him. The fans want a two shot intentional foul. No call, that foul on Hester. And Henderson goes to the line for two. At this point in time, I'm sure Illinois feels pretty good about Henderson going. Let's see if he goes after the ball. Doesn't look like he's going after the ball to me. Looks like he's just grabbing him, makes sure he's not going to get a shot at the basket. That's what the intentional foul rule was brought in to, to stay away from. Henderson. One out of his last that five. One off the rim. These are crucial. Six of 14 for Henderson from the line. Make that 7 of 15. It's a big one, though. Two-point lead by Indiana. One minute left in the ball game. Michael Herman has got to get the ball out of Garris's hands. You can't let him get it back. Henderson, call it on Henderson draws the foul. He went for the steal, but it looked like his offhand had wrapped around the waist of Bennett. Yeah, they're going to say his left hand was wrapped around the waist of Bennett as he knocks it away. Let's take a look at it. You see, coming across the lane right there, you can see he's got his hand wrapped around him. He swings it right there. But at the start of the play, the official definitely felt like... And that is Allen Henderson's fifth foul. He leaves with 33 points, but is fouled out. You can tell by the look on his face, he'd, he'd rather play these last 53 seconds. We'll see what he can do to help this team. Bennett now at the line for Illinois. He'll be shooting two. Illinois. Not a great free throw shooting team other than Garrison Keene, but uh, some of the guys going up there and knocking down some important free throws right now. Then at 58%, he's off, rebound. Indiana, what a scramble. Keene comes away with it. And Illinois has possession, 45 seconds left. About 13 seconds different on the shot clock. That is the game clock on your right. Garris has the ball. 20 shot seconds left side. on the shot clock. Garris blocked from behind by Lindemann. And a hold. What a play. Todd Lindemann with the block shot. Made a great play right there. And Michael Herman has great hands inside. When he gets his hands on the ball, it's going to be difficult to get it away from him. Nice job of dribbling out of traffic as Juan Garris is going to get the foul. Garris is third. More importantly, it sends Michael Herman to the line for Indiana. Indiana's come up with some big plays, but they've also given some plays away. They've missed a number of free throws. There's two missed free throws on the other end they've not been able to come up with. Michael Herman hits a big free throw right there. Herman, 20 of 30 on the year at 67%. He's, played, a big one. he's played against a number of these guys in high school. I'm sure that there's points to be proven out there as he steps to the free throw line. And he hits them both. Indiana calls timeout. And we'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. is going wild. Ted, interesting situation here. Does Illinois go for the three-point shot to tie the game, or do they try a quick two, foul, put Indiana on the line? With the quickness they have out front, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised to get the ball in Garris's hand. Indiana not wanting to foul. Look for Indiana to set up in a shell, not letting them drive the basketball, putting pressure on Keene and Garris. But look for Garris to probably take the ball all the way to the basket, try to get a two, and then foul Indiana right away, put the pressure back on Indiana, make them hit free throws. Indiana's bench is up, and Ed Hightower motions them back. Full court pressure by Indiana just to give some more time off that clock. Here's Garris and Herman matchup. I'd be surprised they just come down and fire up a three right away, but they, they did. Richard Keeney nailed it. Tie ball game, 18 seconds left. Indiana with a chance to win it on the last possession, or we go to overtime. Michael Herman. Evans looks at the clock. Alvin Henderson on the bench. 
Here's Patterson. Bounce pass, Miller layup is good. And a foul on Illinois. What a play by Miller. Not Miller only. Give Andre Patterson a tremendous amount of credit. He didn't panic in the situation. He knew there was time. He makes an excellent bounce pass. Charlie Miller able to come up with the ball, get it on the glass, has an opportunity for three, but with the three-point line and with Illinois and their quickness and people able to shoot that three-pointer, even if he makes the free throw, Illinois still has a chance to tie this game. Late in a critical game, three freshmen on the floor for Indiana, Patterson, Herman, and Miller, and a big play by Charlie Miller as he gets the layup and a foul. You saw how that brought the team together as they huddled up after that basket. Timeout called by Illinois. 3.8 seconds left. 87-85 Indiana Legion will be back after these messages. At AutoZone. Look at that last basket by Indiana. Good job by Andre Patterson. He sees the double team. You can see Charlie Miller makes the cut. It's just a good play all around. Look at the reaction by Andre Patterson. He doesn't score the basket, but he knows the pass he made was just as important as the basket Charlie Miller made. And this is what I meant. Look how the five players get together there. Look at that emotion. That's what team unity is about, and that's what this team, especially with young players, has been looking for. Indiana. Bob Knight, during that last timeout, spent the whole timeout talking to the assistant coaches, devising a strategy, and then he called timeout as soon as players were ready to start. Now he goes back to the bench to relay to the team what he'd like to do. I think you've really gotten a good look at Andre Patterson. I'm sure a lot of you have wondered. He came in this year. He was highly touted, a great high school player. Tonight, you've really got to look at the type of type of player he, he can be and that he can step out shoot the jump shot he can pass he can drive uh, just an all-around player for Indiana there are some old teammates of mine Steve Allfeld Steve Green gives us a chance to tell you the executive producer for Raycom Sports is Peter Rall senior coordinating producer Johnny Tyus the telecast of tonight's game has been produced by Peter O'Brien and directed by Jerry Whitley thanks to you two guys for a great year technical director Gary Joe Rice our associate director is Rex Green, and our graphics by Julie Wark. Stat man, as usual, Terry Moore. Rex Green, our associate director. I'd also like to say a special thanks to you, Laz, for another great year, and especially to, uh, as you mentioned, all the camera guys and all the guys that, that help us, especially Peter and Jerry, who really kind of set things up for us. It's great to hear how well the broadcasts here on TTV are appreciated by our fans compared to some of the other telecasts that they received on their TVs from other networks. All right, 3.8 seconds, Charlie Miller at the line. And there's no timeouts for Illinois, as you mentioned, Laz. Illinois has no timeouts. Charlie going to try to knock this down, look for Indiana to put a lot of pressure on right away. Big free throw. Timeout, Indiana calls timeout right away to set up their defense. You see Sharon Wilkerson checks in. 3.8 seconds, no timeouts. Tell me what Illinois looks to do here when they get the ball inbound. <laughs> well, last time I didn't think they'd look for the three right, right away, but Keen came off the screen. This time, obviously, Indiana going to put a lot of pressure on them. The different things you look at right here is there's always the opportunity, once they get it in, uh, you know, that, that you could foul because uh, obviously you can't you can't make three shots from the foul line on a just a regular foul. Uh, Illinois would have to come up with a you know, make the first one, miss the second one, and get the rebound and put it back in. Not many coaches believe in that theory. So look for Indiana to put a lot of pressure on, on Illinois. Another thing, Ted, to watch for in a situation like this, you like to have the other team move away from the basket they're going to to get the ball, which means they have to stop, turn around, and then come down the floor. If they can make a break and catch a pass uh, between the uh, top of the key and and the half court going the way they want. Boy, that really picks up some time for them. You're exactly right. There's just not much time left, 3.8 seconds. It's long enough to get a pass in, one or two dribbles, and then a shot. But it's not going to give you time to rebound the basketball. Full court pressure expected by Indiana. A couple players back to guard against the long pass. But Garris will be the guy to watch here. 22, Shelly Clark is in, Bennett. Hester and Keene. So the starting lineup for Illinois in the ballgame. Keene will fire in 
They don't guard Keen out of bounds, so Herman drops back. They look for the long pass to Garris, out of bounds, and Indiana will have possession. Garris cut to get open, but Keen's pass went out of bounds. You can see Coach Knight really, you know, set up a great play right there. He acted like he was going to guard the inbounds player, and then all of a sudden, at the last second, they jumped off of him. Then they had five guys guarding only four, made it very, very difficult for Illinois. They threw it straight out of bounds. There should have been no time run off the clock. I'm sure they'll take it back to 3.8. Officials have seen that because the ball was touched out of bounds, so the clock wouldn't have started until it was touched inbounds. So Indiana now has to get the ball in, and you would expect Illinois to foul immediately, but Indiana still...